Hello. Um, I haven't really done a lot of build guides. I uh, wanted to do one for my Fizz Trapper earlier this league, but I thought it was going to get nerfed into Oblivion, so I didn't. And lo and behold, it seems like it's probably going to be okay, but... Anyways, I thought I'd do one for this build because uh, this is kind of like my end of league build. The one I sunk a lot of currency into to try and make good and see if I could build all the gear pieces separately and just throw them on a character and hope it works. Um, I started a Stormbrand and the Stormbrand actually worked great. Uh, it's really enjoyable playstyle, just having them hop around the map from pack to pack, um, clearing off screen. But for bossing, you get like a fixed amount of damage, which I really didn't like. Um, your, your boss damage is basically determined on how min-maxed you are, and not really, uh, you know, anything else, but... I realized that we had a lot of gear for any sort of generic lightning spell and all of our gear would work for any build like that. So we did a little tree, a uh, little tree trimming on our passive tree and sort of landed on spark. Um, Spark is really fun. I think it's one of the coolest skills I've actually played. It's one of the best clear skills I've played. Uh, I haven't played a lot of builds in this game, but with a headhunter, god, it feels amazing. It feels incredibly amazing. Um, anyways, let's just... Uh, I was going to run a map, uh, show you guys the clear. And then kind of explain my gear choices, my passive tree, and our cluster jewels. And then why we go uh, Inquisitor for our, our Ascendancy. Um, I wanted to make this build guide basically because I just read the patch notes. And uh, Spark is getting like a 34% damage buff. Um... And the damage is going to be insanely, like, a lot better next league. So, I think it's going to be, like, actually insanely good. Gwenin. I guess we could do the uh, this thing just to show you guys what it looks like with the expedition. So I'll just stand here. I'll press Vol Spark. I'll put down uh, Orb of Storms even. So Orb of Storms we also use on bosses uh, just for... Oh, we were frozen there actually. Uh, Orb of Storms we actually use on bosses just for like more damage and uh, more consistent um, melting, basically. We melt bosses more consistently with Orb of Storms, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Scourge, as you can see, is kind of rippy. Um, 
Spark is one of those skills where, like, maybe one enemy will get, like, through all of those projectiles and then just smack the shit out of you. It's a lot like Toxic Rain, where, like, one enemy won't get uh, damage over time to, like, enough to where it'll be able to make it to you in time to smack the shit out of you. And that's kind of like what Spark is like. Um, unfortunately, it's just one of those skills where the projectiles actually have to hit the enemy for you to do the damage, and it's a kind of inconsistent skill in that regard. Um, it doesn't do an insane amount of damage, but if you got good gear, it definitely can. Um, that's why it was really uh, good for aura stackers, because there's a lot of axes for scaling the skill. Um, so you can scale it with damage over time, you can scale it with crit, crit multi, you can scale it with prod speed, you can scale it with uh, projectile damage, you can scale it with flat damage, you can scale it with all sorts of uh, conversion mechanics, you can scale it with all sorts of things, you can actually even do poison spark with like uh, certain unique items. Uh, there's all sorts of cool things you can do. Um, I think it's one of the coolest skills I've actually ever played. Um, it's really fun. It's really good clear. It's one of the better... Okay, so here we'll show you what a boss is like. We put down Orb of Storms. Oh, wait, we didn't even put down Orb of Storms. And then we press Ball Spark, and then he's dead. So... That's kind of just what it's like. I would assume, like, the worst bosses in the game, like Maven, are a lot harder. But I haven't tried Maven on this build. I'm not going to try Maven on this build. I made this build for mapping and my own personal enjoyment, and that's it. So that's the map. So let's go over the gear and well actually how about let's go over the ascendancy first uh inquisitor i played an inquisitor in ultimatum league for bladefall blade blast and it sucked uh basically because i'd never played anything but a minion build and i didn't know how to scale builds at that point so anyways we go inquisitor for a couple reasons main thing is we get a lot of free crit from just all of our pathing nodes uh, like all of the strength nodes we take all of uh, yeah so our, our int is almost always going to be higher than our strength so if you had like 60 strength on a belt like we do for headhunter that's just straight up 60% increased crit uh, for our inquisitor which is really really nice because of this ascendancy node uh, after that we take inevitable judgment which if you're crit capped like you probably should be on an inquisitor i'm not quite there because i fucked up my chest piece but uh, we'll talk about that later uh you ignore all monster enemy resistances so this is great for skills that do different types of damage like elemental hit or prismatic skills um or if you're converting half of your damage into a different damage type like we are um, to get the benefits of both ailments so non crits pen which is nice but we have such a high crit chance that's probably not where we're gonna try and scale our damage we're gonna be scaling our damage just on the assumption that enemies have no resistances which is uh, a luxury pretty much only this old guy has uh next ascendancy we take is sanctuary that's what gives us consecrated ground and enemies take 15 percent increased damage when they're on our consecrated ground so if you have a bottled faith this is the only ascendancy i'd actually consider buying a bottled faith because when you press it literally everything around you takes 15 percent increased damage and with a skill like spark that like just shoots out from the middle the same way the bottle of faith does um it's kind of like i wouldn't say it's 
mandatory but it's definitely like felt it's definitely like a huge huge quality of life like amazing sort of thing uh so every enemy within this radius which is a pretty big radius is going to take 15 percent increased damage uh and also from the bottled faith uh stacked on your ascendancy that's 25 percent more damage you're doing to enemies that are within that this radius so also if you have a uh watcher's eye for the zealotry mod that could also help um further that scaling axis but that's up to you we also picked 20 percent multi up from these small nodes which is uh kind of negligible but it it's also really really nice i wouldn't say negligible but um it's one of it's really really good it's it's really good small notes here uh also uh we have conk ground around us while stationary just like the crusader um sort of modifier on body armors so and then we take pious path which gives us 50 percent increased effect of consecrated ground which means we i believe regenerate like nine percent of our life per second um because normally we would regenerate six with uh consecrated ground maybe it's five i'm not sure but there's all sorts of good stuff here this is pretty much a purely defensive node but regeneration is really nice to have especially on this build because we have like almost no defenses uh, but that's our that's why we go this ascendancy basically for the free crit and the fact we can scale two different damage types at once um, so next I guess we'll go over the tree um, I'm only level 92 I, I kind of finished this build at 90 and just sort of said fuck it I'm done but uh, if you're gonna level up to like 96, 97, you could go low life and pick up pain attunement. There are all sorts of different things you could do with this build. This is just kind of the way I did it. Um, plus the build, the league ends in like three days. So I don't want to put a lot more into this. It's just kind of where it is and it's in a decent spot. Um, I will say really quickly, if you want to go storm brand, all you would have to do is drop this cluster jewel uh, just keep the crit chance cluster jewel in here grab rune binder go over the top and grab rune smith grab the two additional brands and then grab these four nodes with the mastery and then for your second brand mastery grab whatever you want and then boom you have a storm brand build also, you'd obviously have to switch out your six link uh, colors for the optimal storm brand links and obviously switch out your spark for storm brand, but that's all you'd really have to do. Um, so that's what I did, but in reverse for spark because I wanted to fit in a second cluster jewel uh, to get more damage. And it worked beautifully. Um, let me see. Let's go over the cluster jewels then. So we use two large lightnings, eight passive. One here has Doriani's Lesson and Overshock with Snowstorm. It would be so much nicer to have two of these on two large clusters because Leech is super super nice to have especially on a build like this where you're regening quite a lot it kind of just goes hand in hand and before we had that uh doriani's here it just sucks not having leech so because you're hitting so many times if you have life gain on hit as well uh just anywhere on the build that'd be really nice uh to maybe investigate for later defensive mechanics the second lightning 
uh, cluster we use is another snowstorm. This is probably the number one damage node you can get on a cluster jewel for this build if you are converting your lightning to cold. Um, and then also we use prismatic heart um, for the alley resistance. This could just as easily be overshock and our shock would be even stronger because of that but the 10 all res is just such a nice thing to have that we take prismatic heart here uh we we have widespread destruction this should be doriani's lesson but finding one with doriani's lesson snowstorm and prismatic heart is like 10 exalts or more probably close to 15 um and it's just up to you if you really want that extra sort of min max uh survivability on a build like this but for me i didn't want to spend that i got this cluster jewel for like three exalts um and it works great so uh medium clusters we use two projectile damage clusters both have repeater because of the cast speed uh cast speed is very important in this build because we use spell echo so uh you will cast twice every time you cast and if you try and move while you're casting and you're in the middle of echoing it's kind of like a it's like a weird it's like you're not casting instantly on your vortex it's it, it kind of stuns you for a sec uh anybody that's played this will know it it's like a stun uh it feels bad it sucks and you just want your cast speed to be like at least above five i'm at about 6.2 so it doesn't feel that bad but if it's not above five you're gonna notice it uh it's gonna suck so just get repeater uh or anything with cast speed that's why we take um quick getaway down here because it gives us cast speed uh on our crit cluster but anyways so we take repeater uh we take streamlined for the prod speeds Pro prod speed is one of our scalers uh it'll allow more balls to hit more enemies faster um so just really really nice uh quality of life thing to have honestly i would probably rather have two of these clusters if i could mirror this i would but like if i could mirror this for 3x i would do that but obviously i can't so uh probably just have to find one on trade but uh the second projectile medium we use is repeater and eye to eye eye to eye is nice because if an enemy does break through like the gap in your projectiles and comes up and smacks your booty uh eventually when it does get hit it will take more damage than if it were like farther away so that's just you know defensive and offensive all in one um and then we use a crit cluster uh not much to explain here just getting our crit higher quick getaway like i said gives you cast speed and move speed uh pressure points gives you double damage probably the best node you can get on these clusters uh up 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 and then we use also a non-damaging ailments for storm rider uh you could even change this widespread destruction to storm rider and then switch this medium out for another streamlined and a repeater and the build would probably feel way better so i might do that here pretty soon but i have storm rider and overchalk um both pretty good nodes uh if you could get doriani's lesson here i don't know if you can but if you could get doriani's lesson uh here then I'd probably do that instead, just so you get more leech. So regular jewels, uh, we have Watcher's Eye. The Wrath Pen uh, does not do anything for this build because of our ascendancy. Any penetration that we have anywhere 
does nothing. The only modifier that helps us in any regard is nearby enemies take increased elemental resist or elemental damage. Uh, because they're taking increased damage, that's not a modifier to their resistance level. So it just means that they're taking more damage, right? So it's not like a resistance modifier of any sort. So that means it will work. Um, if it was nearby enemies have minus 9 to lightning res, that would not work for this build because of this ascendancy node. So any penetration, any nearby enemies have minus 9 or minus 12 to resistances, exposure, uh, curses, uh, other than assassin's mark, or any mark, uh, any curse, any penetration, anything like that in this build does not work because of this node. Um, so conductivity on hit, we cannot use. Assassin's Mark we can because that only increases our crit multi and crit chance against cursed enemies and it also gives us life and mana for uh, killed enemies that were cursed and stuff so I'm really only using this for the crit chance um, and the mana recovery uh, basically just the crit chance the clarity is a nice sort of thing that's on there but yeah the crit chance is really nice to have um you could you could get other things like you could run a vitality with life on hit and be a hell of a lot more tanky uh have a hell of a lot more recovery there's all sorts of things you can do uh other rare jewels we just run uh either double multi uh or a triple multi or quadruple multi if you can afford it uh, I haven't found any quadruple multi that really works for this build. The only quadruple multi we can really get is spells, lightning skills, elemental skills, and dual wielding. And those are all skills that like aura stackers would use or like a lot of people would use. So uh, there, there's not a lot out there. Uh, but we have a double multi here with resistance. We have a cold damage here with uh, triple multi. Um, I'll go over that guy in a sec. Uh, we have a triple multi here with energy shield recharge. We have a double multi with cast speed here and cold res. And then this is actually our worst here. Uh, I'm going to replace this with a double multicast speed and double res. Um, but this is still a pretty decent jewel. Even if you had jewels that all looked like this, you would still have more than enough damage. Um, but obviously try and get ones that look like this. Because, you know, uh, obviously just really nice to have <sighs> anyways threshold jewel these are gone next league uh they won't have the two additional proj uh it'll still let you fire spark in a circle so we fire all around this with this threshold jewel uh without it we just fire in front of us so we only fire you know to our left here or to our right or you know whatever direction uh so if you still want to fire in a circle you can still use this next league i would imagine that's probably still the best option but you know no one knows really uh, until someone makes a good build guide i still think this is a good uh idea even without the two additional proj because spark is gaining an additional projectile uh so with divergent spark you'll have nine additional projectiles and with the uh helm enchant you'll have three additional projectiles so you'll have 12 projectiles in total instead of 13 won't really be that noticeable um and firing a circle is still really powerful, so 
I would still use this um, just because. It's also a pretty decent place to get Corrupted Blood Immunity or, you know, other stats. Uh, like, cannot be injured and such. So that's the tree. Those are the jewels. That's all that stuff. Let's go over the gear really quick. Uh, wands. The, I only use this because it's got uh, really high flat lightning. It's got a hybrid crusader and a flat lightning dispels. Uh, the pen on the crusader mod doesn't do anything. It's got crit chance and crit multi. And the non kiss is extra chaos is actually really good for our build. Uh, I wish I could have that on this one instead of just the 59% spell damage, but uh, it's really hard to find wands with flat lightning and plus one to lightning spells with a free prefix and have the suffixes still be like good. Um, there, There's very few. So... Uh, even though this doesn't have a plus one to spells, it's still more damage than half the plus one to spells uh, wands that I POB. So that's why I'm using this. Uh, this wand, if it were on any other base that gives spell damage, it would be better. But this is probably the best case scenario for a wand you could have. So spell damage, flat lightning plus one crit to spells cast speed and an open suffix for either multi or double damage um or if you had this ex same exact wand with a free prefix so you could craft the spell damage and non chaos as extra that would even be more ideal um I chose the crit multi over the double damage because it's more consistent. We are critting way more often than we would proc the 5% chance to deal double damage. Uh, so that's why I chose that. Plus, there like the DPS difference in POB is like negligible. So I chose the more consistent damage over the uh, double damage. The helmet's pretty self-explanatory. It's just crown of the inward eye. You can use this on almost any build and it's decent. Uh, it gives us a lot of life and ES and even, you know, mana. So overall pretty good. Uh, get this with a spark enchant, not a storm brand enchant. Uh, standard plus two amulet. I'm sure you'll be able to get these next league. They just won't be influenced. So you could even get maybe a plus two with like influence suffixes, possibly. Uh, I don't know if that's possible, but we'll see. Ring, we use crit multi and assassin's mark uh, with lightning against shocked enemies and minus mana cost. If you don't use a minus mana cost anywhere, it's going to get a little rough um and i would even go as far to say you could probably switch out like maybe one of these jewels for a replica conqueror's efficiency so that this goes down to 35 and you would be a lot less strapped for mana uh but anyways or even having like a reduced mana cost of skills somewhere on your jewels along with crit multi might even be like a better way to go um but yeah so that's our ring we use a call of the brotherhood to convert half of our lightning damage to cold damage um any frozen enemies we you we have are shocked so uh that's just you know more damage taken by frozen enemies so like map bosses and stuff like that uh metamorphs uh tanky rares they like beyond bosses even you know stuff like that really nice to have uh i will say that the divergent hypothermia the minus nine to cold res is a resistant stat like our ascendancy says we can't have 
but POB still calculates it. So I'm not sure if this actually still works with Inquisitor, but POB says it does, so I assume it does. Um, I'm just going to go off POB on that one. Boots. Life and resistances would be good, but anything with cast speed or escape, like anything that scales your cast speed or action speed is going to be better. <laughs> so that's why I have these. Uh, elusive scales your movement speed and gives you 15% chance to dodge, basically. Uh, it's really the only last bastion of dodge in the game. Uh, onslaught we have 10% increased cast speed uh, tailwind gives you I believe 10% increased action speed with the elevated so uh, and then we also have the uh, increased attack and cast speed if you killed recently so the, all really 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 nice things the enchant is like, if I was going to get one thing on these boots, on a different pair of boots, it would either be the Elevated Onslaught or the Enchantment. The Enchantment is just straight up 16% cast speed. That's a lot. That's like, you can't get that a lot of other places, you know. Especially getting that on your boots. That's pretty lit. <sighs> Anyways, the chest piece... It's pretty not crafted very well. Uh, we actually don't need an additional curse in this build. So, elevated spell crit and anything else would be nice. Explode does help with clear, but, uh, you know, if you had 2% spell crit chance, like the elevated, uh, you would actually probably be capped on crit. So,. I made a mistake uh, going for Curse and Explode because I hadn't really seriously played as an Inquisitor before, so I didn't really know that that wasn't going to be an option. Uh, whoops. But just get Elevated Spell Crit and, like, Frenzy on hit or something. So then you can anoint Assassination and you'd probably have, like, 200,000 more damage, probably. Anyways, last but not least, the gloves. We have Frenzy Charged with Elevated Unnerve. Uh, and then we Prefix Cannot Be Changed, Veiled Chaos for Crit Chance, and Ellie Damage uh, if we've crit recently. Pretty straightforward gloves. Uh, I think Commandment of Frost would be better because, you know... Uh, freezing, frozen enemies, damage against chilled enemies. Um, we have a lot of different things going for us for like against chilled enemies. Um, so just overall doesn't really matter, but these are pretty nice gloves. Uh, flasks, this flask I only use for phasing. Uh, you could honestly switch this out for an Xeres, which, you know, in like simulacrums and like other such things, I'd probably do so. Um, it's just a lot more damage. It's like 6% more damage. So uh, you could do that. Uh, I think Dying Sun will also give you two, two extra proj. So. Um, that's something you could also consider. It'll give you more AOE as well. So, uh, it's it's up to you. It's kind of hard to tell if you've gotten an additional projectile with this build. So, uh, it's really sort of personal preference. I'd probably go with the it series. I think at a certain point, additional projectiles kind of, like, you know, they, they kind of lose their luster. Uh, this also gives you flat lightning to spells and lightning leashes life. So, 
and it shocks nearby enemies. So maybe this as well would give you, you know, uh, flat lightning. But you, you are shocked, so uh, maybe that'd be for, like, if you had an impulses or something. But yeah, so that's the gear. Um, we have a Ignite Flask. We have an Enduring Mana Flask because, like I said, our mana cost is pretty high. Uh, we have a Bottled Faith because we're an Inquisitor and my friend gave this to me. If we weren't using a Bottled Faith, which we weren't until about two days ago. Um, Where did I put it? Uh, you could even do like a cast speed um, sulfur flask. I think a cast speed sulfur flask might even be the better option. Uh, or you could do a like a cast speed diamond flask or an increased crit chance diamond flask. Um, this will cap your crit immediately on pressing it. If you have like pretty much like all your things up uh, that'll pretty much cap your crit like immediately so it's up to you I only use this because we're an inquisitor and it helps our ascendancy uh, if you want to switch out your crown of the inner die you can go for a archdemon crown that will give you exposure um actually i just realized that doesn't work uh use a blizzard crown blizzard crown uh gives you added cold damage and treat enemies as dealing 10 percent uh less damage or something or 10 percent cold res like enemies have 10 percent cold res higher than they actually do but because of our ascendancy the downside on the on the blizzard crown doesn't mean shit so we can make use of a blizzard crown without any downside uh on this ascendancy which is really nice um so yeah that's basically the whole build um as far as like items and uh other stuff goes oh well, would you look at that um, uh, I guess we'll go over, like, buffs now. So, Spark. Let me see. This is the... Yeah, that's the level 21 one. Let me see here. Uh, so, this is Spark. Um, and we also have a Vol Spark. So, Spark, right now, deals 7 to 1,326 lightning damage. Uh, and next patch, so in like 7 days, uh, it will go up to 1,983. So, that is 34% more damage on the top end of Spark. So it's 1326 now. It will go to 1983, uh, which is a lot more damage. Uh, the effectiveness of added damage is 125% at the moment. So right now, but next patch, it will go to 190. So. I believe this will equate to about a 40 to 45 percent more damage buff for the self cast spark with very little downside uh, if any because we're not triggering it at like pretty much at all uh, so it's just a straight up buff so the fact we're doing 50 percent more damage almost is incredible um, I think this is actually going to be one of the cooler sort of end game builds now that spark is viable without having to like stack like 80 auras 
and use March of the Legion and like other stuff like that, like with pretty well crafted like end game gear, you can have a pretty viable spark build. Uh, and I think that's really, really cool. Um, I think a lot of the new casting things are going to be relatively uh, strong. And this league, I made a lightning caster. Next league, I think I'm going to make a cold caster. So I think I'm going to go winter orb next league. Because winter orb got a pretty sizable buff. Anyways, uh, this wasn't really meant to be a build guide. This was kind of meant to show you like what an end game spark character would look like uh, currently in the game. Um, I'll link the POB in the description of the video so you guys will have it if you want to look at it. Uh, we're not quite crit capped, but we're almost there. And with a little bit of tweaking, we will be. Uh, I know that with a diamond flask, we would almost assuredly be crit capped. So I'll include some extra uh, flasks so you guys can like check that out. There's also, uh, let me see, this belt that will give you like 70% increased damage. Um, or I guess the wed with attack skills doesn't help, so, I don't know. Anyways, that's all I got. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Arch Nemesis League. I think it's going to be really, really fun. I think the new endgame is going to be really, really fun. I think we're going to have a lot of cool stuff to explore. <laughs> I'm going to make a bossing character, so I'll probably put out another guide sometime after league start maybe on my league starter um we'll see anyways that's it bye